In the previous video, we had a look at the iterative solution for binary search. In this video, let's understand the recursive solution. To help you recollect, here is the problem statement from the previous video. Given a sorted array of n elements and a target element t, find the index of t in the array. Return minus 1 if the target element is not found. We've also had a look at a few examples in the previous video. If you have a sorted array with 5 numbers, minus 5, 2, 4, 6 and 10, and target element t is equal to 10, our solution should return 4 since 10 is at index 4. With the same array and t is equal to 6, our solution should return 3, and with the same array but t is equal to 20, the solution should return minus 1 as 20 is not present in the array. If you have understood the problem statement, please pause the video and try solve it. Remember, you have to make use of recursion. And when solving problems with recursion, 1. Figure out how to break down the problem into smaller versions of the same problem and 2. Identify the base case to exit the infinite flow of code. Alright, let's now solve the problem together. Let me bring up the pseudocode we discussed in the previous video to help us with the recursive approach. Luckily for us, the first two points in the pseudocode address the base case for our recursion and the last two points help break down the problem into smaller versions of the same problem. So if either the array is empty or if the middle element is the same as the target element, we exit from recursion. If target element is less than the middle element, we take only the left half of the array and perform the same binary search. If target is greater than middle element, we take only the right half of the array and perform the binary search. The pseudocode, as you can see, pretty much explains the recursive solution. Let's go back to replit and implement it. Let's begin by defining the function signature. Function recursive binary search parentheses curly braces. The function will have two parameters. ARR which represents the sorted array we have to search and target which represents the element we have to find in the array. For example, calling the function with array being a list of 5 numbers and target equal to 10, 6 and 20 should return 4, 3 and minus 1 respectively. Nothing different from the iterative approach. However, the function body is quite different as we will rely on a helper function that will be called recursively. So we are going to return a function called search which will accept four parameters. The first two parameters remain the same, array and target. The third and fourth parameters though will be the left index and the right index. On the initial call, left index will be 0 as it points at the first element in the array. Right index will be array.length-1 as it points at the last index in the array. That is all there is to the recursive binary search function. Let's now define the search function. First, the function signature. Function search parentheses and curly braces. The parameters are going to be array, target, left index and right index. Within the function body, let's add the base case first. We have two base cases in this scenario. First, if left index is greater than right index, we don't have any more elements in the array to work with and hence return minus 1 indicating that the element was not found. Second, we calculate the middle index and check to see 
If the middle element is equal to the target element and if so, return the index. This is no different from the previous video, so let me quickly go through the code. First, we find the middle index. Next, if target is equal to array of middle index, return the middle index. If the element was not found at the middle index, we need to recursively search either the left half or the right half of the array. And here is how we do it. If the target element is less than the middle element, so target is less than array of middle index, it implies we have to search the left half of the array. So we call the same search function passing in the same array, target, and left index. But this time, the right index will be middle index minus one. This is nothing but the left half of the array. Else, if target is greater than the middle element, we need to search the right half of the array. So we call the same search function, again passing in array, target, but this time left index will be middle index plus one, and right index will remain the same. This represents the right half of the array. Make sure to return both the search calls. And that completes our recursive binary search solution. Let's verify by running the code. We see the three values corresponding to each function call. Our code works as expected. What I would like you to do is take a pen and paper, trace the function execution for this array and target is equal to 10. That will improve your understanding of the code we have written and help you form a better mental model of the recursive solution. All right, next it's time to determine the big O of our recursive binary search function. Although we don't have any loops, we do have the same function, search, being called over and over again but the input size does reduce by half every time. So the time complexity of our recursive binary search solution is also logarithmic. Big O is equal to O of log N. With that, we have covered the main search algorithms linear search and binary search. We have also had a look at the recursive solution to binary search. Starting next video, let's jump to the next section in this course, which is about sorting algorithms. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.